Thank you. Welcome, everyone. Uh, welcome to this session about uh, uh, the new styling options that we have introduced in Enfield. Um, in itself, those styling options are not very complicated. So if that was all, we probably wouldn't be running a academy because it's quite straightforward. Uh, we do think it's important to have some sort of uh, uh, underlining of those new stylings because we finally have a solution for the problem that the, the, the font command poses in Enfield. But as I said, it's very simple. And uh, the main reason for running this academy, because it's actually a very nice showcase for what you can do using a team. Because theming is the way that we have solved this, uh, uh, this issue. So that is to set the expectations of this academy. Um, it will take about half an hour. That is exactly the time that we took yesterday too. So what we will be doing on a short introduction, why exactly we wanted this uh, solution for, um, uh, for styling. Uh, talk shortly about what a team does and how that uh, uh, works in Enfield. Uh, then we do a demo both of uh, uh, teaming and of the particular two teams that we are introducing today. And I will explain to you where you can find this team and how to uh, connect a team to your domain. So start with the introduction. Uh, you probably are all familiar with the font command in Odin. Uh, this is how you uh, define the font. Uh, you, get, you give it a, a ID. In this case, it's one, a weight, and you actually choose a font and then the styling of that font that you want to have. Um, that works perfectly when uh, uh, Odin was still used, was only used uh, in a KT studio because you are in complete control of the uh, devices used. Uh, this doesn't work very well in an online environment because you need to give it a weight, which means uh, it, always have a, it always has a certain weight, which immediately uh, destroys, uh, destroys all the device recognition. Uh, uh, that is built into the template and that actually uh, makes the fonts bigger or wider depending on the uh, screen uh, uh, sizes. And you have to choose a font. And that is also not very nice in an online environment because again, you are not in charge of those devices. So you have no idea if that font is actually installed on the other side. Um, so for all that reasons, that font command is not very nice to use uh, uh, in Enfield. So what we, the solution that we made is that we have uh, uh, created a team and you can use uh, uh, simple HTML commands to um, uh, change, uh, the, well, not change the font, but underline and uh, highlight parts of your text. So as said, we do that through a team. Oh, wait, one thing that I want to say about that, that font command, there were a, a few minor bugs in the font command too. Uh, those bugs were especially present when you switched back from a font to the default font. So when you switched back to font zero, we have fixed all those boxes. Uh, uh, that mainly had to do with uh, spaces being removed or not being removed and line feeds being removed or not being removed. We have fixed that so it works like it is supposed to work. Uh, if you, <coughs> pardon, if you are using the font command in a running script at this moment, I do advise you to check if it is still working like you expect it to work. <clears throat> so the team, how does the team work? Well, uh, 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 most of you will be familiar with this short reminder. Uh, you start with the Odin script and the Odin script basically only defines what sort of questions you have and the sort of question on a very 
basic level. So codes, number, alpha, open. And it uh, has a very uh, basic look and feel. Then you use a template in Enfield and that template uh, lastly defines the look and feel and a template adds more complicated question types like uh, 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 drag and drops and that sort of questions, which are basically still codes questions, only you render them differently. That is all taken part of the template. And then finally, you can load a theme on top of that template if you want to change certain things in that template. Uh, certain looks and feel, or even if you want to add some uh, uh, functionality which isn't present in either Odin or the template. Um, the way that it works like this, subsequential has a disadvantage, which we will see later on. Uh, so let's handle that when we see it happening in the script. Um, okay, the demo. Let's take a look at how that teaming then actually works, and that and let's then take a deeper look into the T into the two new teams that we introduced: the Markov team, the Markov team, which is basically a replacement of the font command, and then the Markdown team, which adds some new capabilities, some new mark, uh, some new styling capabilities. So where go to the demos? I prepared a few surveys. Let's start with the teams. So So this is a basic team to uh, 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 a basic survey to uh, show what the teaming and template exactly does. So this is what a question in this case a codes question looks like if you have no template loaded at all. Uh, those of you familiar with our KT system will probably more or less recognize this. This is more or less how the KT system looks. Uh, the old KT system, not the Enfield KT system. Uh, it's very basic, which is on purpose because the more basic it gets, we can concentrate on what uh, Odin is supposed to do, which is take care of the routing and the uh, 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 the basic type and the basic question types, and then we have the template to actually make it look nice. So let's load the template. We do that at the next question. And the first template that will show is actually our old template. It's the Barcelona template. It's a, a, a template that we uh, made when Enfield was mainly a KP solution and not an online solution. And uh, as you can see uh, in a browser, it doesn't look very nice, which is exactly the reason why we created a new template, the Chicago template. Uh, but this gives you an idea of what a template actually does how basically how different a survey starts to look as soon as you load a template and how and how much influence the template is you will see that when i go to the next this is actually no longer the uh, barcelona template this is this is the chicago template the template you probably all know so a template is pretty important on the look and feel of your survey now on top of that template you could also load a team. And most of you will realize that what you can do with a team is change uh, the colors a bit. So let's do that with the next page where I actually load a team. And as you can see, I changed the colors a bit around. I added a logo. This is the functionality that most of you will know that a team can do. Uh, you can quite easily do this. We have a click. We have a a, 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 a click interface, a pointer click interface, where you can change most of this. I will uh, explain you later where you can find this. This is actually made in that interface. Um, now, what we see 
based on the questions we get in the help desk is that uh, a lot of people do not seem to realize that a team can actually do a lot more than this. It can not only change the look and feel, it can actually add functionality uh, to your survey that isn't readily available in either Odin or the template that you are using. Uh, next will be an example of that part. Uh, here, we're back to the basic Barcelona template, and I have loaded a team which, as you can see, adds a countdown clock to this question, but it does not only add that countdown clock, but also adds new functionality. And that functionality in this case is that when that countdown clock runs out, it will actually proceed to the next question if you have given an answer or not, which is what we will see happening now. And as you can see, the next question is actually the end of this survey. This is basically <clears throat> to highlight what a team can do and that a team can do more than only change the look and feel. So, as said, we have created two teams to uh, uh, aid you in uh, styling your questionnaires. Uh, those teams are uh, the markdown team and the uh, markup team. Let's start with the markup team. This is basically the, uh, uh, this is a very basic team, a very light team, and it basically replaces uh, the most used function, the most uh, used case for uh, the font command. So let's actually see what the team does. Uh, this is again the Chicago template loaded with that team. And as you can see, using this team, I can change a, a color of a question, a color of a text, either red or blue. Uh, next uh, page, we can actually see how to do this. Uh, simply, the command you use is markup is red, and then whatever follows will be read until you close it again with this command or markup is blue and whatever follows will be blue until you close it again with uh, this command. Uh, the reason why I can do this here and this is not turning red or blue is because I actually have not loaded that team for this particular page. I have unloaded the team so I can actually uh, use these commands without them actually being executed. Um, this is not all you can do with this markup team. We can also put text in bold, in italic. We can underline text, or we can use a combination of those styles. And how that is done, and uh, command markup is bold, and you close it again, or italic underline or a combination of those three. Um, this is this very simple and light team. And uh, uh, we do expect that in most cases where you would be using the font command, uh, you can replace that with this simple team. Now, we have also created a slightly more complex uh, styling team. And that is this markdown team. Now, markdown is a, a standard that you can use in HTML, a very basic standard to uh, 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 apply styling to an HTML page. And what we have done is we have um, uh, introduced, uh, uh, we have taken a, uh, a command set and made that part of that teaming of a team. And you can now use that command set in that team. You cannot use the entire markdown command set. You can only use the basic part of that command set. And that basic part, as you can see here, that uh, uh, consists of headings, different sorts of headings, which 
can make it much easier to uh, guide your users through a page saying by actually uh, making different headings and even having a note like this here uh, uh, markdown and uh, other thing that you can do using this markdown text is create hyperlinks which i have done here and this hyperlink if i click if if i click on it actually guides you in this time to the markdown guide which is a complete guide of uh, the markdown uh, language as i said we have only implemented the basic part of this language um, now let's actually see how this works uh, markdown if you want to use different if you want to use headings you simply use uh, 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 the hash text the hash one uh, one hash is uh, heading one two is heading two etc etc uh here is how you see that you create a uh, a link you simply put a link here and so between square brackets whatever the text should be of that link and then between normal brackets the actual link followed by the, uh, the hoover over text if you want any so this is the heading and the link that you can use using that markdown and uh, other thing that you can use using uh, this markdown is uh, you can create borders as i done here and here uh, strike through and the bold and italic which is also already available in the previous uh, team and how you do this again this is all standard mark markdown language so uh, borders is done by using two lines strike through by using the tildes bold text by using two underlines and italic by using one on the line and then again we have a borderline by using two lines here as i said there is one thing that you need to uh, uh, be aware of if you start using teams and uh, if you go back to how a team works we first have the odin script then we have the template that is all server side and then the team kicks in and the team basically rebuilds the page in uh, uh to what the team uh, defines that page should be if you are using a heavy team and you are running that on not a very fast laptop like i am doing right now you can actually see this happening so let's go back to that last thing if you looked you very quickly saw the page and then you saw the team kick in and actually rebuild that page uh, you will see it again here there you see that the screen flickering um, this is something that can happen if your teams get very uh, big very heavy and uh, uh, you are running on not uh, uh, very high-end devices so if you are using teams and if you are doing a lot of things on this team i do advise you uh, check this on the sort of device that you expect your users to use uh, to see if you have this problem and then how big it is the uh, only solution if you have this problem is either make your team lighter or make your team part of the template because that is all running server side and then that team then that page doesn't have to be rebuilt so you won't see that happening either so that is the one warning that i would like to place place on the use of teams then let's actually see where you can find these new teams uh, if you go to the enfield manager and then to the knowledge center where you can find all our documentation uh, including the documentation of the Chicago template. 
and uh, the documentation of the Chicago template has a section theming. And in that section, you can here actually see the two new teams. Uh, remember, I said earlier, uh, we have a point and click interface where you can create very simple teams. That team, you point and click interface, you can find um, here somewhere. Yeah, here, the builder, sorry. <laughs> Not there, the builder. This is a, the link to that point and click interface where you can very simple, simply uh, change the colors of the uh, Chicago team and add uh, uh, a logo. If you want to do something more complicated, you will uh, need to understand uh, HTML and JavaScript. Uh, if you do not have that knowledge readily, we can uh, hook you up with a partner of us who is completely trained in, uh, in creating teams and templates. And uh, they can create such a team for you at a cost, of course. Um, okay, then finally, yeah, as I said, you can uh, download these teams from here. Now, once you have downloaded, what, e how can you connect such a team to your uh, domain? You do that by uh, going again to your domain, then to settings that exactly opens on teams. Then you choose the template for which this team is made. That is the final warning that I will give. Templates are, uh, teams are specific to a template and our teams are specific to the Enfield Chicago template. You cannot use them on any other, tem on any other template. So you choose the template for which the team is built. In this case, the Enfield Chicago template. You give it a name. And that name is then the name that you use in your script to load that team, and then you and then you uh, browse to where you have uh, stored the zip file and uploaded the zip file, and from that moment that team is available uh, for that template. So with that to do, let's return to. The presentation where to find the teams. Well, I just saw you. I just explained to you the Knowledge Center documentation and the Field Chicago template teaming. And then in the examples, you will find the two teams. Any questions? Uh, yes, uh, a question came in about the uh, team builder. Um, yeah. uh, a customer received a message from the help desk that a team builder tool is no longer supported. Um, so meaning that it should not be used for creating updating teams. Do um, you know anything about um, this? No, no. Okay, no. well. You can okay. certainly uh, create a team from that. I would definitely always recommend test that thoroughly. <laughs> yes, yeah, that is a interface that will give you a team, but you, you might want to change every now and then, but it's a perfectly starting place to create a team and as long as you do not want anything complicated there that should not be a problem okay thanks um and another question um if the if a team can slow down the uh, survey would it not be better to have the markdown uh option in the uh, template instead of the team it is not as much slowing down the survey it is uh, uh rebuilding that page and yeah a solution would be to have that part of uh, of that template, but let's first actually wait if we have some sort of usage uh, for that markdown team uh, before I start worrying about this. Because as I said, the first team is so lightweight that it doesn't have any of those problems. And that actually tank solves most of the problems that people have at the fault command. Okay, thank you. Okay, then go to the final remarks. As always, a recording of this session will be made available later this week. 
as you can see, the Enfield Chicago documentation has already been updated with these two new teams. There is a blog post about these teams on the NIPO website. If you want to know more, I do advise you to read that blog post too. Uh, then we have two uh, academy sessions planned. Uh, one is the first one is next week, which is about KP Simple Points wet quota. Uh, as those of you using KP will probably know, we are busy uh, migrating uh, uh, the KP surveys from the KP manager to uh, the online manager, which we from now on call the Enfield manager. Uh, we are doing this scenario by scenario. Uh, the scenario that we already moved almost a year ago from the uh, that we made available in the uh, Enfield Manager almost a year ago is KP with sample points wet quota. Uh, the academy session we already run an academy session at that point. We will rerun more or less that academy session because we are now ready to close down this scenario sample points wet quota in the. KP Manager all together. We will do that two weeks after this academy. So if you are using sample points with quota and you are still uh, uh, using this in the old manager, in the KP Manager, I do advise you to, uh, to attend this academy so you will learn how to uh, uh, use this scenario in the Enfield Manager. Then in May, we will have a uh, academy session about the last scenario still remaining in the uh, only remaining in the KP manager, which is at KP with simple points with addresses. Uh, uh, we expect that we are ready to move that one to make that one available in May. And as soon as we have made that one available in the Enfield manager, we will pretty soon close down that scenario in the uh, KP Manager 2. Uh, that will probably be June. So those are the two academies that are in the planning. Uh, any final questions? Yeah, there was a question coming in about support of HTML tables, but uh, th that seems a bit out of scope for uh, yeah. the content yeah. of this session. Yeah, what I do can say is that we are busy creating a uh, uh course for teaming but that is a long-term project i uh, do not expect that to be ready uh before the second half of this year yeah and if i can add to that um, as frank mentioned we have a partner a data expert uh, that can if you don't have the resources yourself to do teaming or uh, no time uh, you can subcontract that work to that partner and uh, they can do anything on uh, survey styling or questionnaire scripting or any data visualization. So if you are in need of such kind of services, then please have a look on the NIPO website. Okay. Thank you for joining and for those of you uh, that are still using uh, KP with simple points and quota in the KP Manager. Talk to you next week. Bye-bye. Thank you all. Bye-bye.